Peace, peace. Shalom, shalom. All praises go to the Most High and the Son. Yahweh, Yahuwah. In the name of Yahusha, Yahweh Shah. I respect whatever form of Hebrew you choose to use. <clears throat> Welcome. Um, I'm Apostle Kazak. All praises go to the Most High. And this is uh, Solid Truth 2. Uh, by way of side note, I will be changing the name of the group soon. I mean, ministry. Um, all led by the Most High. All praises to the Most High. Hold on. So, um, we getting more into the spirit, brothers and sisters. More into the, um, always going to be in the scriptures. <clears throat> but it's time we get more into the spirit. And that's why this series is so important. Because um, we living in a time where we have to have direct contact with the Most High. We have to be present with Him. That's what it means to be in spirit, is to be present with Him. Your spirit connected with His spirit. He show you things in the Bible and outside the Bible. And that's where we at right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, this is part five. This is um, the series um, titled The Mechanics. The Mechanics of the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKadosh. We're going through the functional details. The functional details, if you haven't, please watch parts one through four. This is an ongoing series. Um, we at the second to the last one before I, um, or we um, stop the series and we're gonna, um, it's gonna be pertaining to the Ruach still in the, in the Holy Spirit, but we're gonna, uh, we're gonna start another series relating with the Ruach. But the, um, the mechanics part is gonna be finished because this is just getting the details out the way, the functional details. So we can have respect the Most High, have an understanding about how he operate that part of him, which is the Ruach. And like I said, um, Solomon, he used decorative language to describe the Holy Spirit as a mother. Okay, but the Holy Spirit is a heat. It let us know that God is a, or Elohim is a spirit. The Messiah said that. Okay. But he used the motherly or the caring um, analogy so we can have better understanding. Um, Solomon chose to do that. So um, with that being said, let's, let's go into the functional details of the spirit. Let's get into it. We're going to go to um, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10. Okay, and we have one more part we're going to do about the mechanics. Then we're going to uh, switch gears, start up another series relating to the Ruach, but it's going to be something else. But this is it for the uh, mechanics of the Ruach. This is... um second to the last video here so that'll be a total of six videos concerning the mechanics hallelujah and i hope um everybody's blessed today on the sabbath or whatever day you view this it's time to go deeper in the spirit man trust the most i let him have full reign through the spirit we study the word, we understand the word. Now it's time to let the spirit come into our temple. Like it always been there. We just gotta trust the most high to show us things and to deal with us according to the will of according to his will. Alright, we are in um Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10. Okay, we're going to talk about the sustaining power of the Ruach. That's what this, um, that's what this uh, chapter, that's what we're going to cover here. Okay, the sustaining power. It sustains, the Ruach supports us, and we're going to get a lot of examples and understand it. So let's get into it. So it says, she, referring to the Ruach, preserved the first formed father of the world. 
that was created alone and brought him out of his fall. So we get an understanding on Adam. He was created alone before Eve came on the scene and brought him out of his fall. So even after Adam and Eve fight, fell, because they were both one flesh, um, the spirit still preserved them when they was cast out of the garden. That's what kept them going. Okay, so the Ruach preserve us and to preserve um, simply means to, um, to to favor. When you preserve something, you wrap it up, you, you, you contain it. Okay, verse 2. And gave him power to rule all things. So we want to start ruling more in our life. We have to get into the spirit. The most high could trust us more. We got to keep the laws and commandments, believe in his son. And we will be filled with the spirit. And we will, we will rule more things. The most high could trust us more. He will reveal more. Verse 3. But when the unrighteous went away from her in his anger, referring to Cain, he perished. Also in the fury wherewith he murdered his brother. So we understand when we turn away from the most high, which is a form of anger. Anger is one way to turn away from the most high and his ruach. Okay, that's when we start to give ourselves over to more evil. That's why the Messiah said, Don't worry about the commandment, thou shalt not murder. He went a step ahead and say, Watch our anger. Don't be angry against your brother, okay? Don't be angry, don't hold grudges. So we won't perish in our fury. So we don't wanna be led astray by anger and we don't wanna perish by anger. We wanna be preserved, we always wanna be in the spirit. Always in the spirit. And you can read more about that in Galatians chapter five, hallelujah. Okay, verse um, four. And this is um, the mechanics of the Holy Spirit or the Ruach HaKadosh part five. Part five. It says, um, verse four. It says, for whose cause the earth being drowned with the flood. Okay, because Cain, he was the first one to be taken over by anger and um and to be taken over by fury okay and that led to his lineage they were taken over by anger too then the sons of um elohim when they had sex with the daughters of women that just took things to another level okay so that's what it means to whose cause the earth being drowned with the flood that, that evil that started with him. We know Adam and Eve, they sinned, but the first one to be taken over by fury and anger and killing a man, that was Cain. That led us to the flood, because from starting with him and from generation to generation, things just got worse. The lives of mankind went from being almost a thousand years down to um, the most high saying, I'm only gonna bear with man 120 years. And nowadays we, we doing even less than that. Most, most, most of mankind doing le less than that. But we said that for that cause, the flood came, right? And wisdom again preserved it and directed the course of the righteous in a piece of wood of small value. So Noah was preserved, okay? And he was directed. So that's what the Ruach do. It preserves, it directs. This is the sustaining power of the Ruach. A piece of wood of small value so it, it don't matter long as we connected with the most high with his spirit with his son everything that we have is gonna be of high value even if it's small value according to the world the most high is going to use it for our benefit and that's what that ark was it was to preserve it was to direct but it started with Noah being preserved and directed by the spirit that led to that physical direction of the uh, ark and being preserved. Hallelujah. Verse 5. 
It says, moreover, the nations and their wicked conspiracy being confounded, she found out the righteous and preserved him blameless unto Elohim and kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. That's talking about Abraham, the, mo the most high, using his spirit called out to Abraham, told him to get thee out. Preserve the right. The Most High is always looking for right, the righteous to fill his spirit, those who have a heart for him. That's why those who don't want to believe, we don't waste too much time. Paul said in Titus chapter 3, verse 10, two admonitions, then after that, reject them. The Most High takes over. We don't make and force people. The, the, the Ruach is the one power source that draws people. And the Father, Son, and the Ruach is all one. But in this case, the Spirit draws people. And, and um, it's said in the uh, in the Scriptures, I forget, uh, it's in the New Testament, because the Messiah said it, but the Messiah says it's the Spirit that draws. It's the Spirit that draws. So, we don't get bent out of shape. Sometimes it takes time. A lot of people haven't went through enough yet. And sometimes people just condemn. They just condemn themselves. Okay. So, as we can see, Abraham, he was preserved. Kept him strong against his tender compassion toward his son. Because he was told to sacrifice Isaac. But it was a test. And that, and, and that was indicative of us sacrificing our life. It says in Romans chapter 12, be a living sacrifice. Be a living sacrifice. And that was also a sign of the Hamashiach, the son who was gonna be killed for the sins of Israel and all those who believe. Okay? So we got the sustaining power of the Ruach still moving, verse six. It says, when the ungodly perished, she delivered the righteous man. She fled from the fire which fell down upon the five cities who fled from the fire. So that's that's referring to Lot. In the Sodom and Gomorrah situation, uh, the Ruach was involved with that too, with the angels and, and uh, preserving Lot and his family. Verse 7, of whose wickedness even to this day the wasteland that smoketh is a testimony and plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness and a standing pillar of salt is a monument of an unbelieving world or soul excuse me an unbelieving soul so if you do a little archaeology research about Sodom and Gomorrah you still learn that that part of Israel is still it has sulfur it still have burnt residue to this day Showing that the scriptures is, is uh, verifiable. That, that's for all the unbelievers. That's to help them. Um, and it goes on to say the plants bearing fruit that never come to ripeness. So that land is so destroyed and, and cut off from the Most High. It bears fruit that falls off t too early. Nothing reaches its full potential. See, when the Most High get the judge and nothing reaches full potential. That's a cursed state. And being in sin, that puts us all in a cursed state. We, we are like plants that don't come to ripeness. I had to bring this out in the spirit. We want to be planted in the most high. We want to be planted in his word. So we could grow and have fruit that come to full production. So in the land of Sodom, fruit don't come to full production to this day. And it goes on to say, and a standing pillar of a salt is a monument of an unbelieving soul. And that was Lot's wife. She looked back. She did not believe. She turned to a pillar of salt. She was destroyed right along with her unbelief. See, unbelief leads to destruction. You're just cut off. It's required that we believe in the Most High, that we trust His Word, we trust His leadership. We may want to reason it and logic it out and all that stuff, but at the end of the day, we each have to meet our Maker. So that unbelief has to be dealt with today. Today, believe in your Creator. 
okay and um let's continue verse 8 for regarding and we are going through the mechanics of the Ruach HaKadosh or the Holy Spirit this is part 5 it says for regarding not wisdom they got not only this hurt that they knew not the things which were good but also left behind them to the world a memorial of their foolishness so that in the things wherein they offended they could not so much be hid we still talk about Sodom and Gomorrah to this day especially with this um, LGBT movement that is a reawakening of Sodom and Gomorrah those same foul spirits same fallen angels mocking the most high mocking the most high blaspheming them and it says that they knew not the things which were good so the most high gave Sodom and Gomorrah over to a strong delusion to believe a lie that's why Shaul say the weapons of our warfare are not carnal it's spiritual that's why we got to understand the Ruach we got to be preserved we have to be sustained right because we see that Sodom and Gomorrah is a memorial even to this day for not regarding what wisdom which is the Ruach of discipline part of the Ruach is discipline which is wisdom verse 9 it says but wisdom delivered from pain those that attended upon her so being caught up in the spirit brings about deliverance deliverance of the soul onto the spirit because the soul is just a basic part of man. The spirit is the part of man that's constantly being created in his image. Doing his purpose, his will. So we want to be delivered. We want to be delivered. According to the spirit and according to being part of the elect. Because destruction is coming. All this sin is going to be dealt with. Um, a lot of people believe in it. And what the news promoting and the things, the activities that are happening around us. They love Satan and his children so much. But it's still a hope because we're going to continue to go over that. It's still a grace period. But we got to stop loving evil and those who promote it. We, we have to. Because that's why a lot won't be delivered. A lot of people. So we want to be part of that elect. Hallelujah. Um, let's go to verse 9 No verse 10 When the righteous fled from his brother's wrath She guided him in right paths Talking about Jacob Okay She led him uh, She guided him in right paths Showed him the kingdom of Elohim And gave him The knowledge of holy things Made him rich in his travails And multiplied the fruit of his labors so, we may be at a point in our life where we fleeing, okay? We fleeing. And what better guidance to have than the spirit of the Most High? Because it led Jacob down the right path when he fled. And that same spirit showed him the kingdom of Elohim. And the kingdom involves everything, the, the, the power of the Most High. Re Revealing dreams, visions to you And revelations Another part of the kingdom is the laws and commandments The Messiah Just having your whole life engulfed In the presence of the Most High That's the kingdom Right here, you got it right now You being the temple And then, to mention We had a kingdom in the heavens above That's that's the new Jerusalem that's going to come down to earth According to Revelations 21 and 22 So the kingdom of Elohim is very rich Okay It's very rich Because it gave him knowledge of holy things Jacob started to get more understanding The same thing with us When we fleeing And we had nobody to depend on but the Most High and his Ruach That's going to be our preserver Our sustaining power Just like it sustained him We're going to know things It made him rich in his travails because everything that Jacob went through with his uncle, he still came out on top. He still came out on top and multiplied the fruit of his labors. 
because LeBron was trying to diminish his labor, trying to rob him, just like we live in this oppressive system where they have everything set up. They don't want nobody to get physically rich, really. And if you do, you either got to sell out or you got to, you, you, you have to pay so much for permits, you got to stay registered. Um, I mean, like I always say, rich is a subjective. It's very subjective. There's nothing objective about rich. Rich means different things to different people. Me, and according to the scriptures, I'd rather be rich toward the most high. Because one thing about money, let, let's, let's talk about that for a quick second. You always want more and more. I'm talking about in general, not me, but in general, people always want more and more. They never satisfy. So, and then once money is no longer valuable, guess what? It's no longer riches. Because money is only valuable because man say so. Once man decide, the creator of the money, which is the Federal Reserve, decide that it's not valuable, guess what? It's not valuable. So what are true riches? True riches is having a relationship with the Most High, believing in His Son, keeping the laws and commandments and being led by the Spirit. That's when you're gonna have things revealed to you from your Creator directly. That's when you're gonna tap into true riches. But as we can see, as we tap into that with the Most High, He's gonna provide everything else. And that's why Jacob came out fine, hallelujah. But just keep that in mind because Paper money and coins is not going to last long. They're already having a coin shortage out here, so-called coin shortage, at these um, stores. Saying that, you know, we're, you give us this, you know, in exchange for coins. You know, the Federal Reserve holding back coins. You know, all this madness going on right before our eyes. This is stuff is pre-planned, but that's why we have to be in the spirit. Spirit going to guide us just like God Jacob. Verse 11. It says, in the covetousness of such as oppressed him, she stood by him and made him rich. Okay, and Laban, it's talking about Laban and Jacob. We want the Ruach to stand by us while we go through oppression. The Ruach gonna guide us, verse 12. She defended him from his enemies and kept him safe from those that lay in wait. And in a sore conflict, she gave him the victory that he might know that godliness is stronger than all. So that's talking about Jacob, defending him from his enemies. Gave him the victory. Because if you don't know, Jacob was on a run from Saul. And when it was time to come back in contact with him, he was very um, worried. Okay, but the Most High gave him the victory through the Spirit. Verse 13, but when the righteous was sold, she forsook him not, talking about Joseph, but delivered him from sin. She went down with him into the pit. So sometimes we get sold out. See, we got to look at this in the spirit. We get sold out. Okay, just like Joseph was sold out by his brothers. But the spirit remained with him. It was a purpose behind that. The Most High was going to work everything out for the good. So even though we go through a pitfall in our lives, we're going through a little tribulation, as long as we stay faithful, filled with the spirit, the most high, he gonna work that he gonna work it out no matter what. Just be patient. And I'm a I'm a living testimony of that. Just be patient. Verse 14, I continue to be um an example. And let him not in bonds, and left him not in bonds till she brought him the scepter of the kingdom and power against those that oppressed him. As for them that had accused him, she showed them to be liars and gave him perpetual glory because those who sold him was his brothers they lied say he dead so jacob found out he was still alive so they they were um ashamed but his situation turned it gave him power um, among his oppressors because pharaoh made him um basically pharaoh of egypt um the real pharaoh took a seat and gave joseph um favor and glory to rule because the spirit was with him, showing him dreams, showing him um, how to deal with the circumstances. And that's what the spirit do for us. 
It will, it will provide us with favor among our enemies. And it, we will receive direct communication from the Most High as well as His Word. Hallelujah. Receive it. Verse 15. She delivered the righteous people and blamed the seed from the nation that oppressed them. That was the nation of Israel being delivered out of Egypt. Verse 16. She entered into the soul of the servant of the Most High and withstood dreadful kings and wonders and signs. Talking about Moses. She entered into his soul. That's what we want. We want the Most High to send his spirit to enter into our soul. To enter into this temple, this flesh. And give us power. Let's take heed. And withstood dreadful kings and, the, and wonders and signs. It's going to be mind-blowing things that the Spirit could do through us. We don't fear politicians. We don't, we don't fear, fear governments. We speak the truth. And the Most High going to preserve us and sustain us. The sustaining power of the Ruach continually. Receive this. Hallelujah. Verse 17. Render to the righteous a reward with their labors and guided them in a marvelous way and was unto them for a cover by day and a light of stars in the night season. So they were led day and night and our ancestors did not come out of Egypt empty handed. The spirit always going to turn things around in a way where we're going to be provided for on a spirit level and on an earthly physical level. The problem is we worry about the earthly and physical too much. We need to get into the spirit, reading the word, fasting, praying. And not only we, I mean you, myself too, that's why I say we, I'm always included. So um, the righteous, a reward of their labors. That's what the spirit gonna do, verse 18. Brought them through the Red Sea and led them through much water. That was the spirit that divided the Red Sea. Even if during archaeological studies, the, the uh, fragments of bones and fragments of the chariots and the weapons and stuff was found in the Red Sea. See, we got to do research on Bible history, those of us who struggle with belief. Bible archaeology is this for a reason, because this Bible is true. We just live in a time right now where we are tested. The whole world is under a test right now, starting with the children of Israel. And the most I want to know is who, who's going to repent and who's not, who's going to believe in his son. All this stuff is a test. This is the most high um, will. That's just the way it is. All right, let's finish this chapter out. It says, um, but she drowned their enemies and cast them up out of the bottom of the deep. Therefore, the righteous spoil the ungodly and praise thy holy name, O Yahweh, and magnify with one accord thy hand that fought for them. So that same sea that opened up for the nation of Israel, it drowned their enemies, the Egyptians, or our enemies. So the same means by which we're going to be saved is the same means by which the wicked or our enemies going to be destroyed. That's how the Most High work through His Spirit. Okay, that's just how things work. Verse 21, for wisdom. Okay, the last part of verse 20, magnify with one accord thy hand and fought for them. Yeah, the, 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 the Most High fought for the nation of Israel. Verse 21, that's what the Spirit would do for us, fight for us. For wisdom opened the mouth, pay attention to this. This is very, very important. For wisdom opened in the mouth of the dumb and made the tongues of them that cannot speak eloquent. That's what the Ruach do. Those of us who didn't know the Most High, we didn't deal with the Most High, that was a form of being dumb. We didn't know how to speak according to the oracles of the Most High. But once we're filled with the Spirit, we're made eloquent. We don't need the institution of man. All we need is the institution, the kingdom of Elohim, which is his word and which is his son. That's all we need. Be convicted today. We're going to go over um, chapter 11. 
chapter 11. And this is the mechanics of the Ruach, part five. And we're gonna go over the constant covering of the Ruach now. We went over the sustaining power, how it sustained the nation of Israel, how it sustained Joseph, Moses, okay? And the various ways how it sustained Adam and how it, it didn't sustain Cain, it destroyed Cain. So as it sustains, it also don't sustain certain people, so it depends. It sustain the righteous and, de and destroy the wicked, okay? Now we're gonna go over the covering, the constant covering of the Ruach. Verse 11, I mean chapter 11, Wisdom of Solomon. It says, she prospered their works in the hand of the holy prophet, talking about Moses, prophet the, the works of the nation of Israel. This is what the Ruach did. They went through the wilderness that was not inhabited and pitched tents in places where there lay no way. So just like they were in the middle of nowhere and they were still provided. Just like us, we're in the middle of nowhere in our life, but long as the Most High did His presence, His spirit, we will be provided for. And I'm a testimony of that myself. Verse three, they stood against their enemies and were avenged of their adversaries. Vengeance belonged to the Most High because His spirit his spirit gonna deal with them. Now there's a time for everything. You know, if our personal space is violated, or if we're extremely disrespected, of course the Most High gave us the willpower to defend ourselves on that level and our loved ones. But if our personal space ain't violated and um, there's no extreme disrespect, we have to live and walk in the spirit, brothers and sisters and let the spirit fight our battles for the most part. Verse four, when they were thirsty, they called upon thee and water was given them out of the flinty rock and their thirst was quenched out of the hard stone. Israel, the nation, our ancestors, while they were in the wilderness, water, Moses was led to have water come out of a stone and they were given thirsty. They was given thirst, uh, their thirst was quenched, excuse me. So, the Ruach will provide a way out of no way. That's why the Messiah say, don't worry. You, we cannot increase our height by worrying. It doesn't benefit. Just trust the Most High. He will make a way out of no way. Most of the time, it's something that we're not doing something that we have to cut off, we have to change from habits. Other times, we just have to be patient, it's not time yet, all right? So that's the same thing where they were provided for. Most High was showing his covering, his sustaining power. Verse five, for, but, for by what things their enemies were punished, by the same they were in their need were benefited goes back to the Red Sea. Just like the Red Sea benefited, excuse me, our ancestors, it did not benefit the Egyptians. See, that's how the spirit, the spirit weighs and balance everything. That's why we don't have to worry. All things work together for the good of those who trust the Most High. Verse six, for instead of a fountain of a perpetual running river, trouble with foul blood, because all the blood in Egypt, all the rivers and the waters in Egypt was turned into blood, according to Exodus. Verse seven, for a manifest proof or obvious judgment, okay, from the Most High, that's what, that's what that means, of the commandment. The Most High gave a commandment along with the blood, the foul blood, okay, whereby the infants were slain, all the firstborns, that's, the, that's how we, they're basically saying here, that's how we know that was the work of the Most High. Because not only was the waters of Egypt turned into blood, but the firstborn was taken out. All, they, all the firstborn of Egypt. That's how we know it was an obvious judgment of the Most High. That's what that's saying. Thou gavest unto them abundance of water by means which they hoped not for. While our ancestors were in Goshen, that part of Egypt, they still had water. Even though the clean, purified water. 
why all the waters of Egypt was turned to blood to show you how the spirits provide for you and judge your enemies. There's a separation. Just like these times say everybody concerned about what these devils doing with the COVID and with all these plant um, activities, it's going to work against them. But it's going to work out for those who trust the most high. See, there's two things going on. There's sustaining and there's covering for the righteous and there's judgment for the wicked. For those who at the elite level and those on a bottom level who choose to not believe and mock and scoff. So there's two things going on. Verse 8. Declaring by that thirst then how thou hast punished their adversaries. The Egyptians died of thirst while Israel was quenched because the Egyptians weren't drinking anything. So that's what it means by declaring by that thirst that how, then how thou hast punished their adversary. They was dying of thirst. They had nothing to drink. So that time when the waters were turned to blood, they, the Egyptians were dying by the record numbers. But, but, um, but it goes on to say that, uh, verse 9, For when they were tried, albeit but in mercy chastised, they knew how the ungodly were judged in wrath and tormented, thirsting in another manner than the just. So the judgment that the Most High had for Israel was less um, extreme than the Egyptians. They got the full measure. Because as you read in Exodus, um, Moses came to Pharaoh countless times, came to the Egyptians countless times. So the judgment, it was ripe and ready for them. But the children of Israel, they were dealt with merciful. Okay, and it taught a lesson. Let's see what lesson it taught. Verse 10. For these thou didst admonish and try as a father, but the other as a severe king thou didst condemn and punish. So the Most High dealt with Israel as a father, disciplining them, but at the same time loving them. But the Egyptians, it was just total wipeout for them. So the Most High was giving us an understanding through his spirit of uh, how he did. He could be favorable toward us or he could be severe, depending on which path we take. We choose to serve him or choose not to serve him. Okay, so we had an extra, we was getting understanding at, about the Most High at the same time, our ancestors. Verse 11, whether they were absent or present, they were vexed alike. It's talking about the Egyptians. Those who were present, they were being destroyed, wiped out, and suffering misery. And the Egyptians who came home, they who who, who were tra out traveling, and they they came back home. They heard bad news. See, the judgment affect those who's there and those who not there. Verse twelve: For a double grief came upon them, and a groaning for the remembrance of things past. So we're going to find out that double grief that came upon the Egyptians, verse 13. For when they for when they heard by their own punishments the other to be benefited, they had some feeling of the Most High. So not only had they deal with the judgment of the Most High, the, the uh, water turning to blood, dying of thirst, firstborn dying, they also had to deal with feeling remorse and wanted to repent, but it was too late. So that's the double grief, knowing that the Most High is real and knowing that the Most High is actually whooping you. Now you're convinced, but it's too late. You're already in the middle of um of being taken taken out. Okay, that's what that means, double grief. All right, um, let's continue. It says, for when they heard by their own punishments the other to be benefited, they had some feeling of of the most high verse 13 that's for now verse 14 for whom they rejected with scorn when he was long before thrown out at the casting forth of the infants him in the end when they saw what came to pass they admired so they started to have respect for Moses the Egyptians because they did try to destroy him when he was born just same thing with Joseph not when Joseph was born but when he was a young boy his brothers tried to destroy him 
But the most high work these things out in our life for good. Those who hate us going through bad situations, he wants us to draw close to him. And he's gonna bless us more. Finances and having the worldly success, that's not enough. That's not even real success. Real success comes when being connected with our creator. Being filled with the spirit. The most I could do better with our life than any man's system can. That's what we have to understand through the spirit. Hallelujah. Let's continue because we got a um, little bit to go. It say, verse 15, it say, but the foolish devices of their wickedness, wherewith being deceived, they worship serpents, void of reason, vile beasts. Thou didst send a multitude of unreasonable beasts upon them for vengeance. So the same animals they worshiped in Egypt, them same animals came out to destroy them. Verse 16, that they might know that wherewithal a man sinneth by the same also shall he be punished. So sin brings about judgment and the spirit gonna make sure that's carried out. We don't get away with nothing. We could have forgiveness. We could have pardon. That's the mercy of the most high. But outside of that, judgment has, judgment has to come. Verse 16. No, verse 17. It says, For the, thy almighty hand that made the world a matter without form, one of not means to send among them a multitude of bears or fierce lions. So the most high who created all things and everything, his intention wasn't that these animals were going to destroy. These animals, everything's supposed to live in harmony. But it was sin that set everything off pace. And sin started with that fallen angel, the serpent, that devil that deceived the woman and Adam. And that's, and, and that's what brought about disobedience and disobedience bring about judgment. So these same animals that wasn't originally created for, those, for destruction are now used for destruction. Verse 18, of unknown wild beasts full of rage, newly created, breathing out either a fiery vapor or filthy sense of scattered smoke or shooting horrible sparkles out of their eyes. And when I read that in verse 18 in the description, I thought about predators and reptiles. I thought about predators and reptiles. And um, when you look at a crocodile, because I used to watch National Geographic a lot, you'll see sparks of fire come out their eyes. See, that's the the Most High putting in them judgment against the Egyptians. Same things they worship, they were destroyed by. Okay, and this happened in Exodus. This is just the details. Verse 19, whereof not only the harm might dispatch them at once, but also the terrible sight utterly destroyed them. So they wasn't only harmed physically, but just the visual of these reptiles and predators killed a lot of the Egyptians. Verse 20, yea, and without these, might they have fallen down with one blast, being persecuted of vengeance and scattered abroad through the breath of thy power. But thou hast ordered all things in measure, number, and weight. So even in judgment, the Most High is still merciful. He gives a judgment according to your exact sin. Or he provides mercy based on your repentance. But we talking about judgment for sin here. The Most High still, justice is still administered. It never ends. Because he could have wiped them out without no beast, without the blood of water, turn the water turning to blood. But the Most High, even with those who are not Israelites, he was dealing according to measure to show us. The Most High is always just in his doings. Verse 21, for thou can show thy great strength at all times when thou wilt. And who may withstand the power of thy arm? No one. The Most High could do what he wanted to do. We have to submit to him. A lot of unbelievers may have questions, but it doesn't mean anything. The Most High is still ruler, even after your questions. Even after you felt like you arrived to a point where you feel comfortable to do your own thing, the Most High is still expects repentance, to believe in His Son, keep His laws and commandments. See, that's the Spirit working. The Most High does what He wants. Who could stand against His power? Verse 22. For the whole world before thee is as a little grain of the balance, yea, as a drop of the morning dew that falleth down upon the earth. Man is nothing but a vapor. 
we have nothing to take pride in. We have everything to be humble and to repent for. And this is the spirit talking, man. Letting us know how to get right with the Most High. Letting us know the power of the Most High. Everything the nation of Israel went through with the Egyptians. Letting us know how the spirit work. Spirit is balanced. The spirit gives grace. Spirit is forever present. Verse 23. But thou hast mercy upon all. For thou canst do all things and winkest at the sins of men because they should amend. So that's why we still live. Some people say, man, I've been sinning. Um, I even heard some, some uh, dude say he shot up the Bible. He shot it. But see, that, that, that's just paper. But the Most High, he still, you still living because he's what? Merciful. He know how silly and foolish man is. Still want you to get it right. All of us. Hallelujah. Verse 24. For thou lovest all things that are and abhors nothing which thou hast made. For never what is thou hast made anything if thou hated, has hated it. So the most high in essence, he loves everything. But it's sin that brings about the judgment. It's sin that brings about the um, enmity. But the most high, he has mercy. And this is all explained in grace. But that grace don't last forever. And this is what the Spirit is rewarding us here. That, and Because the Egyptians had grace. But we seen what happened. They, was, they were judged at the end. That grace runs out. Verse 25. And how could anything have endured if it had not been thy will or been preserved if not called by thee? That's right. And we have to make our election sure. Even though we're called and preserved, Predestined, each and every day we have to make our election sure because predestination and free will works together. We could throw things off by our disobedience. We're still responsible people, including myself. Hallelujah. Verse 26, last verse. But thou sparest all, for they are thine, O Most High, thou lover of souls. Essentially, the Most High, he loves souls. But when souls love sin, he has to deal with them. He has to deal against them. So let's get caught up in the spirit. This is the mechanics of the spirit. So we learned about the mercy of the Most High. We learned about the sustaining power of the Most High. We learned about the covering of the Most High through his spirit. Always working with us. So let's pray. Most High, in the name of your son, Yahusha, Yahawasha, whatever form of Hebrew, brothers or sisters use. We pray, Father, for your spirit. We thank you for your spirit, Father, for your covering. We thank you, Father, for your sustaining power. We pray right now, Father, that your spirit come dwell in us, Father, teaching us and guiding us according to your word and guiding us according to your direct revelations, Father. Help us to trust you, Father, especially in these days filled with trickery, filled with men who hate thee, who feel like they could call shots over the whole population, Father, because our uh, everybody or the population especially our people Israel don't understand your great power help us to tap into your power by believing in your son keeping your commandments help us to appreciate your goodness father knowing that you made a way out of no way allow us not to be stubborn like the Egyptians father allow us not to be stricken with unbelief and turning into an unbelieving soul like Lot's wife. But preserve us, preserve us among our oppressors so we can elevate, Father, for your kingdom. And knowing that you work everything out for good, no matter all the suffering, all the pitfalls, all the misery, you was, you using that to train us and to make us stronger, Father. Just like diamonds, and gemstones under the ground, they go through pressure, they go through all kind of changes just to come out beautiful, to come out strong. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your Ruach. In the name of your son, Yahusha, Yahawasha, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's it for part five, uh, the mechanics of the Ruach. Um, this went into a lot of judgment, understanding the Most High as well. But it all works out. The spirit sustains and the spirit covers us. Get ready for part six. That's going to be the last part for the mechanics. 
Then we're gonna start up another series for the Ruach HaKadosh. Um, if you haven't, uh, go to the group school of uh, the Prophecy for Hebrews and slash Set Apart Companions on, on Facebook. We doing great things. The Most High is doing great things in the spirit. So join because the Messiah say true worshipers worship in spirit and in truth. So put in your invite and um, until next time, uh, brothers and sisters, be blessed, be strong. Peace, peace.